Lil Uzi Vert, one of the biggest rappers in the game today, but that ain't all positive. As time went on, Uzi done got into it with a lot of rappers. Some situations cleared up, others nearly ended careers. So what happens when you get into it with a rapper the whole world loves? Years ago, Uzi got into it with someone we know a little too well. Offset. So if you remember, back then, Uzi was on the devil timing real bad. Hold on, let me explain something to them real quick. Before everybody starts screaming and saying, oh, like I told y'all earlier, you entered the rapture. And if ain't nobody flying up to heaven right now, obviously all y'all is going to hell right with me. So let's get it. Oh, you already here. I'm so sorry. You can't get out. You're stuck. It's over. You heard the song a million times and you didn't even know. That's up, but I still love you. And you know, with someone moving like this, not everyone was going to be okay with it. Uzi was getting crazy looks from fans, industry, everyone, rappers included. Uzi was rocking the upside down cross 24 7. It was just a part of their brain. When people seen the cross, people seen Uzi. All y'all went upside down cross. Even my little partners, man. Well, Stop that shit. You look lame. All that worship the devil. Get with God, man. And now a whole B just sparked up after the post because Uzi was online trolling. Uzi was posting backwards words, posting 666, tagging Offset, trolling them in the comments about church, all kind of time. But Offset coming at Uzi like this ain't coming without no problem. If you remember, Right around this time, it was all kind of rappers acting like this. It wasn't just Uzi, it was a lot of people. And they ain't taking too nice when Offset was online talking how he was. You was the first to take this to the internet. You was a stop speaking on street, you industry, pig tail wearing. You was a and pig tails style. It all on the internet. I'd be glad to beat your ass though. You talking about you wearing pig tails like a So now it's Offset, Sir Baby, and Uzi all beefing because Offset spoke on the whole upside down cross timing they was on. That wasn't it though. It was one more person who got involved. But the reason they stepped into it was because they was feeling like Offset ain't had no business speaking on the younger generation. He was looking at Offset like he was old head. In reality, he wasn't, but that's how he was looking at it. Hey man, tell this get off for him, man. Yo, man, always on somebody, man. Shut your ass up, man. Like 35, still trying to catch the wave. Career over, man. Shut up. up. You run. He was with Ryan. Straight Ryan. Quavo, the best rapper in me goes. Arrested. Irrelevant. Hey, matter of fact, no, I'll take off. Take, take off straight. Take off straight. They gonna be talking. Offset be talking. I don't know how they do. Song goes on, though. Really? With Uzi and Offset, that was the end of their beef. To the world for years, we wouldn't really hear nothing about the two beefing other than some shots here and there. Till, like, 2020. A whole lot of red comes out. And if y'all remember on Punk Month, Cardi said, I was in Paris when Uzi and Offset started hitting. And I had to stay out of that because that wasn't none of my business. And so this had people thinking about the beef again. People was like, okay, what did Uzi and Offset really have going on? And the world would find out just a few months later in April of 2021. For context, if you don't know, Uzi date JT. JT be with Young Miami. And Young Miami was with producer Southside at the time. And look, we don't know what Uzi and Miami had going on, but they was mad at each other. They had some problems going on and aired it out on the media. Yeah, Carisha, Carisha, Carisha. That's understood. Carisha, Carisha. Carisha, 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 Carisha. It ain't even about that, though. It ain't even about that, because you know me. I ain't no fool. I ain't never got to see you just like you ain't never got to see me. Oh, it ain't about, I'm about to say it. Shut up, let me get my whole speech out, because you know I don't do this. Yeah, I do. It's me. Look at my car. Look at my life. I do way too much. <laughs> so anyway, Carisha. Um, and JT told me, she like, Uzi, you ain't gonna do nothing but make it worse, so don't say nothing. But you know, clearly I run this show. what I said to you, Carisha, because you left me on scene. Yeah, because it's like, it's understood. I mean, you're right, not I friends, so we don't have to be friends that see. It's you. not about that, Carisha. You already, I told you. Later on that night, Southside get on IG speaking his mind. He felt some type of way because Uzi was talking to his girl like that. Yeah, let me say this one time. Hey, Uzi, don't don't address none of my. B you 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 handle your, b and you stay on your side and y'all stay on your side. You got one more time to say something. You ain't got one more time to say none of my. B I promise you, I'ma punch your teeth out your mouth. Don't say nothing else. Nothing else to my. B if you don't like my, b don't like my. B them do them. I don't get in that. We don't get in their problems. Stay the little weirdo you is, keep rocking purses, keep doing that doing. I ain't with none of that plan, bro. None of that. None of that plan. I'm the same 
saved you from getting robbed from offsetting them. Don't forget that. I'm the same only nigga in the studio that had blicks on me. I'm the same that kept you from getting your jury took when Merck's picking up your jury, nigga. Let's not play stupid, man. Stop playing dumb with me. Don't play stupid at all, bro. Don't play dumb. You feel me? Go on with that shit, bro. Deal with your and stay with your That's all I'm gonna say. One time I would slap dunk. I could have slapped dunk with the party the other day. You feel me? You and that security. I don't ride around Miami with security. We ride around Miami with sticks. That's it. That's how we play. I'm tired of you on this acting like you niggas tough and you is gangster. You niggas got up in Atlanta, go around, pay, give whatever the fuck you want just so niggas around you. I ain't got to do none of that. I'm really thugging. Stop playing with me. Don't say nothing else to my That's my last time saying this shit, nigga. I'm telling you. Or you gonna have a real problem on your hands. Herb can't save you. Mansky can't save you. Watt can't save you. Nobody can save you. I want my head. I want my fame. Now look, to me personally, what this mean is it was something deeper than just that beef going on. Because really, sit and think about it. If this true, would Offset, not even just Offset, would anybody really go out their way to try to rob somebody because they was wearing an upside down cross? No, I don't think so. So for Offset to allegedly try to rob them, meant that they had some actual problems going on but at the same time music with migos has been teased over the years 2019 quavo got on twitter saying migos x uzi 2019 but that song never came out the song got took off the album that was coming out later that year and people was wondering why did it have something to do with Offset? Did it have something to do with the label did uzi not want to clear the feature we don't know but what we do know is Offset came to Twitter saying that the song was dropping a week after the album came out. And look, to this day, Uzi and Offset still don't follow each other. They really don't communicate. You don't see them online together. There's barely any pictures of them in recent time. They just don't interact with each other. Similar to Uzi and Gotti. So, if you don't know, Gotti locked in with Migos. It was a point in time where when you seen the Migos, you was definitely going to see Lil Yachty. Even though the two, Gotti and Uzi, was freshmen together, they wasn't really ever cool publicly for real y'all and uzi done had problems going back years if you remember when the two was first coming up they was getting compared a lot their music was getting compared heavily this 2016 this whole melodic sound is new to the world people people don't really know how to understand so they was getting compared a lot and neither one of them like being compared to each other their music wasn't similar they was two completely different artists but it was pretty much one moment that started their whole beef 2017, Uzi was getting ready to drop Lovers Rage 2, right? And throughout the year, they just promoting music, just trying to build us some hype. So, Uzi posts a snippet, and for whatever reason, nobody will ever know why Yachty did this, but he gets in the comments saying, it sound hard, but it don't sound better than that little Yachty. Uzi responds, put your album out so I can destroy you with mine. And don't rap through your nose on this one, Yachty. He probably thinking, oh, okay, man, they just, they just playing, they trolling until Uzi said what he said. Next, you is mentally challenged. Don't try to bring that foolishness over here. You better finish your last challenge. Now go find a new girl and stop worrying about boys at La Yachty. We don't know where this came from. We don't know what made Uzi want to say this, but from this moment forward, it was really it. It was over. Next few years, they wouldn't argue, they wouldn't be seen together, they wouldn't make no music. Until one day in 2020, Uzi got online in at Bo at La Yachty. Where you at? You know what you did in 2018. Yachty responds to Uzi saying, what I do? Uzi says, JT. Context time. Uzi date JT like we all know. But you know who else dated JT? Lil Yachty. And when Bolt seen that, he was trolling. But Bolt and JT is his own thing. But basically, he cheated on her while she was locked up and they broke up. And that was the end of that situation. Fast forward a year later from Uzi calling out Yachty on Twitter. And the situation came back to life. So one day, Adam 22 hit Yachty. He like, hop on his phone call with me for an interview. But was like, cool. Day comes to the interview and Yachty and Adam on the phone talking. And his man's asked Yachty about him and Uzi relationship. Okay, oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait. Let me ask you, let me ask you about this then. Okay. Are, are you and Uzi like cool? Like, are y'all homies? You talk to Uzi? Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. I didn't know. I don't know. But anyway, listen. And look, that's it. Yachty didn't even say no words for real. Yeah, he might have made that noise, but he ain't specifically say nothing disrespectful. He ain't announced that he not friends with Uzi. He just avoided the question. And I'm telling you this, because right after the interview, DJ Vlad turns around and makes a post saying, Lil Yachty seems to confirm he's no longer friends with Uzi. And the problem with this is Yachty never specifically said himself, they weren't cool. I mean, yeah, y'all heard the clip and he made it seem like they wasn't cool, but, but he never spoke that sentence out of his mouth. And to me, it seemed like Vlad was trying to start something out of nothing. And when y'all seen it, he got on Twitter wild. Vlad TV, you a B. 
bitch. Because that's not what I said. Stop twisting words, you FBI agent. Vlad responded. Nobody twisting your words. They asked you if you and Uzi was cool. And you said, eh. Watch the video yourself before you start accusing people of twisting your words that you said yourself. Kids today love to play victim and blame everyone else for their own actions. Yachty said, bro, it don't mean we not cool. I mean, I'd rather not speak on a situation publicly. Vlad responds, AKA, meaning you not cool with him. Because if you were, you would have said it. And look, this had Yachty here. I can't even read to you what he tweeted. Just know he was wilding on Vlad. But in the middle of that little thing, Vlad brought up the situation I was talking about earlier. That little Twitter thing when Uzi was at Yachty. Vlad says, well, after doing some digging, now I see that your little Uzi Vert comment that you trying to backtrack from is a whole lot more than we just don't talk. Seems like the whole thing was about JT of the City Girls. And here's the tweet that started it all. Now, Vlad is wild for this. He was really trying to spark up some beef about nothing. Now, imagine if Vlad would have started this beef, right? And somebody would have died behind it. Then what? That's on Vlad because he sparked up a whole situation that didn't have nothing to do with nothing. But the funniest thing about it, though, the whole internet was really cooking Vlad. Like, everyone was looking at Vlad like he was a cornball for this one. Just look at the replies. You a cop, Officer Vlad doing some digging. You the feds, police activity. Vlad was cooked and rightfully so. He was definitely tripping with this one. But this sparked up a conversation between Yachty and Uzi again. People had to know if they was actually cool or not. And one thing about the situation that had people kind of mad was there was this Drake and Uzi snippet called At The Gates. That was crazy. I'm talking about this a hit. If they dropped this song right now, I promise you it was going number one. It's that good. But the song never came out and people got speculating thinking Drake ain't want to drop because Uzi and Yachty had this going on. You know, Drake best friends with Lil Yachty. But eventually, Yachty spoke on everything many times after all that went down. After he cussed Vlad out, a leak came out where Yachty was rapping. I can't play it, but I can't read it to you. Do the right thing like your friends with Mookie. No matter how bad they want to collab, I ain't friends with Uzi. But in the song, he ain't say the whole name. You just hear the start of it and he cut the rest of the name out. And when people heard that everybody was coming at Yachty, and he kind of did backtrack. Original tweet said, rappers will clearly diss another rapper publicly and backpedal when they get called out. Yachty responds, I did diss him. I said we won't collab because we not friends. We aren't. We ain't cordial. Y'all are Hey. And then after he tweeted that, a fan even called him out on the whole backtracking thing. Lil Yachty so scared, bro. How you gonna diss him? Then come to Twitter trying to save your image. Uzi always owned you. We all know you was begging for an Uzi feature in 2017 and trying to click with him and Cardi in 2019. But after all that, he said one last thing. Me and Uzi aren't friends. We used to be cool. It's not beef. It's just competition. That's all it is. We ain't friends. But the man Uzi definitely wasn't friends with his rich kid. This one of Uzi's most iconic beats of all time. One that ran social media when it happened. But how did it even start? So something I didn't speak on yet was Uzi and DJ Drama had their problems going on. And we gonna get back to that later. But just know Uzi had labor problems going on. And while he was in the middle of that. Someone came and gave some input that wasn't asked for. Rich the Kid seen Uzi was complaining about the label situation and Rich responds. That's why you should have signed with Rich forever. But Uzi responds, ain't no way I'm signing for 20 racks. Now that is crazy. Trying to sign Uzi for 20 racks in 2018 is wild. I can understand 2016, 2015. But in 2018, 2017, trying to sign Uzi for 20,000 is crazy. After he done had number one hits, a diamond single. But Rich was still going. Hey man, your boss ain't treating you right. Your CEO ain't treating you right, man. Come over to Rich Forever Music. You know what I'm saying? Come over to Rich Forever Music. You did. Then about a month later after this, Rich was having an interview and they got to talking, asking him questions. And one question involved Uzi when they asked if he would sign him. Yo, if Uzi didn't have a deal, would you sign him? Um, no. Why not? Not right now. Maybe back then. Really? Yeah. Why not now? Mm, I w I, maybe I would sign him on my business, but not, you know what I'm saying, for personal reasons I wouldn't sign him. Yeah. yeah. And so at first, Uzi didn't really respond until one day out of the blue, he posted a pic of him holding the crab and tagged Rich the Kid as a crab. And for years, I didn't know what this meant until I made a vid on it last year and my comments explained it to me. Basically, it's a diss to the Crips and Rich the Kid was claiming he was a Crip around that time. But they just kept dissing each other back to back and at one point, Rich even previewed a diss track on Uzi. But all this little back and forth was just adding up and it was getting at Uzi. It was eating him. He wasn't liking none of that. And so, one day as Uzi in his hometown, Philly, guess who he sees? Guess who happens to be there at the exact same time as him? 
rich to get. Uzi ran down on him, chased that man all throughout the streets. He was jumping over counters, over cars. I, it, it was rough. I'm talking about the whole internet was cooking Rich the Kid. Anytime Rich got online, he was getting fried. He was getting cooked. And even after that situation, they beef was still going strong. 2019, Rich the Kid came on an interview claiming there wasn't no beef at all, saying that it was cool. But that was the farthest thing from the truth. Rich, I'm just going straight, straight ask you, man. Where is you and uh, Uzi Vert's relationship now? Uh, no, nah, we ain't got no beef. We straight. We cool. It's the, the, the world is big enough? Yeah, the world is big enough. The world is mine. The world is everybody's. I heard that. And you know, and I, and I did just just kind of want to ask because I'm I'm really on the outside looking in, and I'm a yeah, elder. We was at the same place like last week. We had the same jewelry store. At the jewelry store? Yeah, we had the same jewelry store. Yeah, that matching necklaces or what? <laughs> no, we was just it was just um, coincidence. We were there at the same time. And absolutely I, nothing happens. No, I didn't. I didn't like. I didn't know he was gonna be there. He didn't know I was gonna be there. But you know what I do love about that man, and I don't know that. Anything else gets sensationalized. Anytime something else go on, people would like to blow that up. You know what I'm saying? One year after this clip, Uzi did one of the most disrespectful things he could have did to Rich the Kid. Remember, a ton of the tank had been hyped up for years leading up to 2020. And finally, in March of that year, he came out and dropped it. But not without some problems. See, the same day Uzi dropped the deluxe, you know who else dropped that day? Rich the Kid. And this wasn't no accident. Uzi had this planned out. A little bit before the album came out, Uzi was on Twitter saying, I'ma drop when he dropping. People was wondering, oh, is he talking about Cardi? Or was he being petty talking about Rich the Kid? Turns out, it was definitely Rich the Kid. And when I say Uzi watched him, it was bad. Eternal Tate sold 288,000 copies first week, and Rich the Kid boss man that dropped that same day sold 19,500 copies. Now look, first week sales ain't everything. But when you beefing with a nigga that made you run away from him in person and he outsell you like this, you gotta be feeling some type of way. It still wasn't the end of their beef though. Fast forward two years, 2022, Uzi and Rich the Kid allegedly squashed the beef. Even though they ain't spoke on it publicly, they have been reposting each other music. Rich the Kid be like, oh yeah, Uzi hard. He repost the Uzi song, Uzi repost that he posted it. Like they be showing love to each other. But someone he ain't show love back to was a man that went by the name St. John. At around 12 p.m. on July 2nd, 2021, Uzi was in West Hollywood, pulled up to a cafe, the Dialogue Cafe to be exact, and Uzi walked up in there. And he seen some he ain't like. He allegedly showed the strap, and after he did all hell broke loose, St. John and Uzi got the fighting in there going crazy. Or at least that's what the world thought at first when the situation broke out. Turns out Uzi was riding by. He seen his ex, Brittany Bird, at the cafe. Her and St. John was there at a business meeting, and Uzi happened to roll by when they was together. Uzi hopped out the car, swung on St. John, Uzi strap, fall out his pocket on the ground. Brittany see all that going down, she walk up to Uzi, and Uzi allegedly point the gun at her, hit her, boom. Worst part is, Brittany ended up going to the hospital, and when 12 got involved, they hit Uzi with three years probation, one year in treatment for mental health and substance abuse, and 52 weeks of DV counseling. Uzi really did get lucky, though. They passed him a pretty fair plea deal for the charges he was getting. He was getting charged with three felonies, assault with a strike, criminal threats, and DV. It only had to do what? Probation? Take some classes? Well, that's lucky to me. Another beef he had got into was one with Roddy Rich. So a while back, Roddy definitely had on some bullshit. He did not have it on. He did not have that shit on. And he was in the flick with some people in the rap game. And, and the pick got posted to the internet. And when Uzi seen it, he posted trolling, talking about these big ass books. Who is this? I only saw the books. I hope this is a normal person. And it ain't take long for Roddy to respond. But he ain't respond just joking around. Oh, yeah, you, you funny. Nah. He basically told Uzi, you laughing in my boots. But I hit your hoe. I hit your girl. And the thing is, I don't know what these two had going on. But Uzi knew that was Roddy. There was no way he didn't know it was Roddy. The picture was all over the internet with Roddy Rich's face in the picture. And soon after that situation, Roddy previewed the diss track. And it was only a matter of time before Uzi responded himself. Pink tape come around and Uzi had this to say. Your voice don't sound the same. Get your range back. When they bring these lanes back, you said you hit my hoe. I hit yours too. Now look, we don't know if he was talking about Roddy 100%, but connect the dots. Roddy said what he said to Uzi. Uzi responded saying this. That wasn't all he said. But you ain't even get your change back. They ran to your crib and took your platinum plex. I thought you was, what's up with that? And in the song, he bleeps it out. People speculated and assumed that he was saying crip because Roddy 
is a crip roddy being a crip is basically a part of his whole image just look at how he spelled the name but claiming roddy house got ran into is crazy you know the thing is it ain't no reports of this online so take that as you will even though that beef was quick one beef that was it was uzi versus dj drum all the way back in 2016 uzi signed a generation now the world was thinking everything was gonna be okay until lovers Rage 2 was getting ready to come out and uzi was blaming drama on twitter for the delays i'm talking about he was always on twitter tweeting about dj drama one tweet said my album ain't dropping because of an old person who don't understand what's going on right now can you guess who and so people start replying to the tweet saying dj drama Uzi was retweeting it, basically confirming that's who he was talking about. And really over the next few years, Uzi was just always speaking his mind on this label prompt. One tweet, and if y'all do sign, sign to a major. Don't sign to no rapper or a DJ. It's just easier when time comes for that fake stuff. Uzi felt like the label was hoeing. He had a feature on Nav album Bad Habits, but it got took off before the album could come out because allegedly the label didn't want it to. And right around this time, Uzi got tagged in with Rock Nation. And if you remember, he dropped free Uzi and that song was on all plastic, basically basically him promoting that he free from the label. But it but turns out he wasn't. Soon after the song came out everywhere, it got took off streaming services and the only place you can listen to it to is on YouTube. But keep in mind, this was all Uzi side. We ain't even hear from the label and drama. So what did they have to say? You know, we've been talking to Vert consistently for the last like six, seven, eight months per se. So, mm. and it's dope. It's a good feeling. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, we went, what we went through, you know, it was, it became public, but it, you know, that, that happens between family. Like, and, mm -hmm. and one of the reasons why I was like, it was a tough spot for us is because, you know, vert success was our success. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I, instead of like necessarily coming out and feeling like we wanted to defend ourselves, cause we took a lot of heat, yeah. like, you know, it was like generation now, you know, and even, even with the rock nation situation, like. Rock Nation was 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 put in the media as if they saved the little Uzi Vert's career and you know from I didn't gather that what so? okay I I don't look at press releases I'm huh? sorry you know, <laughs> it, was a, it was a free Uzi campaign and oh then, I remember that shit yeah and then it yeah, came yeah, yeah. Rock, I remember that. I remember that. Rock okay. Nation saves little Uzi saves him from who mm. from three young black men that m met in college at Clark Atlanta and Morehouse yeah. who grew up on hip hop, who were best friends, who then came into the game, changed the game and then created a label like, huh? We're not culture vultures. So let's be clear, man. What, what's going on with you on Uzi Vert, man? Because um, it just feels, it just felt like he, he, um, y'all yeah, not on the same level. Mm -hmm. but he was pretty love. public about it. Remember yeah, he was, the tweets? He was, he was you know, I know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Right? Right, cool. Like, yeah, he put the tweets on and uh -huh. everything. So, you know, and he created a certain narrative. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And in a situation like that, when, you know, Uzi is, you know, one of the biggest artists in the world, like, mm -hmm. there wasn't even a, a space or a place for me to really, for us to feel like we had to defend ourselves. Like, we know where we come from. We know mm -hmm. we do good business. You know what I'm saying? And like, if there's any, if there's a personal situation, mm -hmm. I can't help that. Like, you know, I can't help how the guy might feel about me personally, but mm -hmm. I know when it comes to business or, you I think know. It, it was like they, they said that y'all was holding his music up. Yeah, we're, we're in the business of putting music out. Right. So, you know, I'm holding the music up with not help us in no, no. But eventually in 2020, Eternal Tech did drop. So really just think about it. Uzi dropped the album in 2017 and didn't drop again until 2020. That is crazy to think about compared to the amount of music we've been getting from him today. But this drama slash Uzi situation wasn't just between them two. It brought somebody else into it. Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow versus Uzi was a beef that not many people know about, but it go back a minute, all the way back to 2019 before Jack Harlow was as big as he was today. He got tapped in with DJ Drama. And in the middle of the Uzi Drama beef, Jack Harlow trolled a little bit. He posted a pic of him and Drama with the caption that said, just sign my life away. Double tap if you can't wait to hear a tunnel of tape. And look, I'm gonna say one thing about drama. That man got a thing for finding superstars. He found Uzi back before Uzi was popping, and he found Jack Harlow before Jack Harlow was popping. Now, look at both of them. Jack Harlow got a number one song in the world right now, and nigga, Uzi is Uzi. But back to the beef, Jack made this post, and Uzi responded by posing the pic of Jack Harlow with a clown emoji over his face, saying, free Uzi. Fast forward some months, Jack Harlow spoke his mind on that little situation. How do you feel about Uzi putting a clown emoji over your face on, uh, on Instagram? As soon as I saw it, I got butterflies in my stomach. Why, just because he was acknowledging you? 
Well, I just couldn't believe it. I was just shocked. I didn't think he would acknowledge me. Right. Yeah. And what, why Why was he pissed? Was it just because you're signed to drama and he's having his issues? I think I, it's because I aligned myself with drama during mm -hmm. the situation. I posted a photo with my arm around drama and I said, double tap if you can't wait for eternal to take. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what made you want to do that, though? You just feel like you had to sort of have that sense of solidarity with the team? Yeah, partly that. And... Part of it is, was there was a there was a genuine side to it in that one I wanted to show I'm with drama. There was mm -hmm. a lot of shit being talked about drama. Me being an Uzi fan, I didn't think it was gonna be taken how it was taken, but that's how it went. Right. And now Uzi don't like me. You never heard anything else after that, or never. No. Uh. -uh. But they had their dislikes for each other. But what Uzi would really hurt both Jack and the label would be when he dropped the Eternal Take the looks. So if you remember what I said before. He dropped the deluxe the same day as Rich the Kid. But it wasn't just Rich the Kid who dropped that day. Jack Harlow dropped the same day. So Uzi was really cooking both of them at the same time. Remember the tweet. Soon as he dropped, I'm going to drop again. That tweet really was directed at both Jack Harlow and Rich the Kid. But a few days after deluxe dropped. Someone tweeted at Uzi saying he declared war on Jack by dropping the same day as him. And Uzi responded saying Jack was doing great. He didn't care. A few months later though, Jack Harlow dropped his hit, was popping, and threw some shots at Uzi on the song. He was basically like, y'all trying to diss me on the ground, I can't switch up on the label, I can't switch up on the fam. But what really confirmed who he was talking about in the music video as he rapping, the lyrics I just read to you, he on his phone typing the clown emoji. And who just called him a clown with a clown emoji on his face? Uzi. That wasn't all Jack said though. He had a freestyle with Fun Flex and 100% a shot at Uzi. Rappers got short man syndrome in a god complex, and who's a short man that people like to say got a god complex? Lil Uzi Vert. And really ever since then, the beef ain't been brought up, they ain't argued enough. Even though that beef ended kind of peacefully, it was one that went in a completely different direction. Uzi versus producer Forza. This was someone Uzi had known for a long time. They went to high school together and all that, but as the years went on, they stayed in touch. Uzi recorded music, Forza produced music. Eventually, Forza got to a point where he was a part of working on Dying. He was working with Uzi. He was working with all these other artists. He was locked in. It was looking like he was finna be making some big moves. But it was a problem. Most of the songs he made with Uzi never came out, meaning he didn't really have no money coming in. Yeah, he might have had these connections, but it wasn't turning into money in his pocket yet. And he was starting to get impatient. He needed the money then. He needed that money now. So it was probably a point in his life. He was struggling to pay bills. I guess he didn't want to get no regular job and just waited out for the bag to come. And so he resorted to the one thing you should never do to an artist. He started leaking and selling Uzi music. And that's how he was getting his bag for a minute. Until someone held Uzi up and told him the truth. At Forza, been selling your music if you ain't know. Right after this, Uzi got the Twitter speaking his mind. Uzi and Forza was in the hotel room at the same time when Uzi got this DM. Forza lucky I ain't mess him up. He ain't like, I ain't know he was selling and stealing my music. We should have stomped you out, but we just kicked you out the suite. Sleep outside. If you don't know, this was leaking and selling. I know you cold. And when the world found out about what Forza did, he was cooked. Working on Diane responded by dropping him. They dropped him as a producer. His friends left him. Nobody wanted to be around Forza anymore because they just couldn't trust him. If you was finna leak your homeboy music that you've been friends with since high school, what else would you do? And look, I can't see both sides, right? He broke. He need the money. He, you need money to live. And he wasn't getting none. Could Uzi have just passed him some money every once in a while? Like, here, bro. But what Forza ain't know was if he just waited a few months, he would have finally got that bag he worked so hard for. He would have finally got that money he worked so hard for, right? Because when Uzi tweeted that, that was on November 29th, 2019. Eternal Take came out in March of 2020. So if he would have really just waited them little three, four months, that nigga would have had a bag in his pocket. But time goes on and he really starting to regret it all. And when everybody was dissing themselves from Forza, he got online doubling down on what he did. LOL, when you dedicate three years of working with one artist while they continue to make millions and you don't got a single penny, then talk to me. Until then, y'all never will understand what that feel like. It's not like I was just being paid and just being a greedy dude. I never had nothing to my name. A real dirty nigga could have probably tried to steal from me. I'd rather go make some money on my own than be a thief. Couldn't even pay for my rent. My own weed. They wasn't even gonna help me buy a laptop when mine broke. But y'all think because I'm hanging around with them, I'm supposed to be happy. Man, I'm not gay. I don't have to pay for nothing. I got family and bills. Y'all is sheep. Not saying nothing else about this. I'm all for stand down till you come up. But don't starve your dogs and not expect them to bite you 
when they hungry. And like I said earlier, he definitely do got a point. If Uzi knew he was holding on to these songs for that long and he knew what kind of situation Forza was in, Forza couldn't afford a new laptop, he couldn't afford his bills, Uzi definitely could have paid him some money because it's not like Uzi giving him money just because. Forza is right here cooking up beats, making hundreds of beats for Uzi, spending nights just making beats for Uzi, and he not seeing no money. Uzi could have definitely been paying him. Uzi and Forza relationship was cooked at this point. Yeah, we know it, what Forza did, but please God drop watch this. It's been almost three years sad face. Is that a Forza beat? If it is, um, no. You know, the thing is, he did drop the song that was asking for in that clip, but just not how you think. Watch this was produced by Forza like the clip just told you, and it got leaked or whatever, but earlier this year, it had a remix that went viral on TikTok with a completely different beat. So Uzi being petty, he decided to actually come out and drop the song without the Forza beat so Forza wouldn't get no money. And when Forza found this out, he was heated. I'm talking about he was on IG Snap. This TikTok fan remix of a Uzi leak is addicting. Forza said, this sucks. I hate y'all. I hate y'all TikTok dude. The disrespect. And so after this, he was still mad until the world it looked like their relationship was done for until one day Uzi was performing at Rolling Loud and he played a song that had a Forza beat on it. And when Forza seen it, he was on stream. He was finna cry. He said to himself, I'm about to cry. But what really had the world thinking their relationship was repaired was when my homeboy 11 11 dropped a vid about the situation. And while he was making the vid, he reached out to Forza himself. And Forza said, him and Uzi still cool. He still made beats for him every once in a while. But the damage that situation did to Forza was already done. Throughout that time he was beefing with everybody, that man joined the military and quit making beats. But one beef that really ain't in too well was Uzi versus Pop Hunter. 2022 came around and Pop was hot. He had a hit and kinda had the world in the chokehold, the internet, TikTok. Every time you went anywhere on the media, you was gonna hear a Pop Hunter song. Until one day, out the blue, something real crazy happened. Something from his past was found out. Basically, all the way back when Pop was 13, 14, he had watch somebody get smoked in front of him. And when the cops confronted Pop, they was trying to manipulate him bad. I'm talking about, they sitting here telling this 14 year old boy, him and his mama is gonna go to jail if he don't tell them what went down. Listen though, right? It's how this went, you know what I'm saying? Like when, when they came and grabbed me, like they lied and said that they got consent from my mom to talk to me. No, for real, for real, they didn't get no consent from my mom to even say anything to me. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like, you feel me, like I like I just came in to, like, to the room when they was asking me shit and I just started saying stuff. No, like, they was saying to me like, oh, if you don't tell us what happened, we're gonna lock you and your mom up, bossy, bossy, bossy. Like, it was really saying this to a 14 year old trying to get information, like, so. See, you don't know kind of what's happening. I, You're scared. I've never been in no shit like that, bro. i never been in no shit like that. That's like, that's like, take you, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? around that age you who, who not no street dude yeah you know what i'm saying like you never been like you never been around that type of stuff you never did anything to to even you put to yourself me. I'm, in, you know I'm saying like I'm, like I'm just saying though you know what i'm saying like as a kid you know what i'm saying like what is you going to think for for and the craziest part about them questioning pop was he didn't have nothing to do with the situation he was just there and watched it happen and they singled him out because he was friends with the people that killed him. but fast forward some years he popping as a rapper working with all these artists got songs with uzi got songs with tusi everywhere everything was looking good until the paperwork from when he was 14 years old came out as soon as it did Uzi hit him up. Look, bro, you gotta take me off your EP. I can't accept what you did. Pop said, come on, bit, bro. Everybody's starting to hate me because I was being loyal. I did what I had to do. I can't even get features from artists no more because of this. Uzi said, sorry, little bro. I just can't respect you for what you did. And really from this moment forward, Pop was cool. No rappers ever wanted to work with him. He was blackballed over that situation from when he was 14. But some weeks back, I told this Pop Hunter story in real deep detail in the video on screen right now. 